It's easy to say, don't worry, we'll quickly recover, but hard to ignore the destruction and vandalism that continues to eat away at our city and its reputation. It's hard to see a once vibrant downtown wounded, still boarded up and vacant. And it's difficult to be optimistic when it seems everywhere you look, you're greeted with this. Graffiti, trash, garbage, and filth. How does Portland recover when it's this bad? We will cut through the red tape or die trying. Hi, how are you? Meet the trash czar, former mayor Sam Adams, the man now in charge of digging Portland out from under the tons of garbage now choking the city. We've got an enormous task in front of us, so we cannot afford to have disconnected department and governmental efforts to clean up the city or red tape standing in the way. And there's a lot of red tape to cut through. Unlike most every other major American city, Portland has no citywide sanitation service. More than a dozen departments and agencies are involved. It's a governmental garbage mess that wasn't a priority before the pandemic. Now it's a disaster. That pile of trash over there, that's the Transportation Bureau's problem. The filth and debris at that corner, that's TriMet's job. The garbage, including human waste next to the homeless camp in your neighborhood, that's Metro's responsibility. When you're trying to clean up Portland, it's easy to pass the buck. Here's what the mayor said when I asked him about the graffiti and filth along the roadways leading into the city. That's not the city, that is the state. Those are ODOT right-of-ways and that is their responsibility. Adams is already cutting through the bureaucratic mess, working with ODOT and other agencies, organizing business groups, volunteers, community leaders to come together and just get the job done. Well, I've never seen the trash problem this bad. I'm a native Oregonian. I was born at Good Sam and in all of my years here, I've never seen anything like it. Chris Carrico is head of SOLVE. She has mobilized hundreds of volunteers and groups to meet the challenge. Working with Adams is a key part of the solution. And there's this. We caught up with a company contracted by Metro to clean up garbage sites. They're required to sift through every pile, every bag, checking for used needles and biohazards. Not the kind of work well-meaning volunteers are equipped to do without training and precautions. Got to be a staff-led event. Because we are the ones that know what we're doing, and uh, we are discouraging volunteers from going out and, and going on their own for some of these areas that are a little bit rough. You can pick up trash and see instant results, but you can't undo the long-term damage to Portland's downtown quickly. How do you restore a city's heart, its reputation? Some people think, oh, the solution to a bad reputation is a public relations campaign. Economist Bill Connerly wrote a scathing article on Portland called Death of a City. It appeared in Forbes magazine earlier this year. Whereas actually the solution to a bad reputation is to stop doing the things that gave you the bad reputation. Portland needs to address these really significant issues. Issues like ongoing vandalism caused by repeat offenders. The mayor recently started taking a firmer stand on arrests, putting pressure on the Multnomah County District Attorney to follow through with prosecutions. Adams agrees with the mayor's tougher stance. You know, this is about stopping self-described anarchists who just last week said maybe we should, you know, start another fire in the Multnomah County Courthouse. That's a crime. And our job is to stop that crime and get the DA to prosecute those that are guilty of it. The protests and violence over the last year has put us in a very difficult spot. And it's going to take us some time to, to get back. But Jim Mark heads up Melvin Mark Properties. His family has been in business 75 years, owning, operating, and managing buildings, many in the downtown core. His buildings have suffered damage. They've been boarded up. He's waived rent for many of his tenants this past year and he continues to invest in downtown, he remains optimistic. You know, I think leadership comes from all of us, so we're all responsible for where our future is in Portland. So I'm not quite on the let's blame the mayor or let's blame the council. Jim says if we want lasting recovery, it may be time to rethink Portland's downtown, like we did in the 1970s and 80s, when downtown was a model other cities admired and copied. So if Portland did have to reinvent itself, it had to give people a reason to come down, whether it was retail or just the urban environment. We've got to rethink the way that works again. Can Portland work again? 
Can we dig out from our current mess? Can we recapture the spirit and drive that made this such a special place to live, to raise families, to grow businesses, and to dream? Or is Portland over? Absolutely not. Portland is not over, but we're still a wonderful community. And every time I'm out at an event and I see my, my community members, my neighbors, it gives me hope every day. Portland is not over if people lean in to helping recover. It takes every single one of us.